gets is that the folks of Nazareth are ordinary folks. In fact, they're ornery folks in general. I don't like them because they're ornery. And I don't see in the Old Testament that the Messiah can come from Nazareth. And therefore, from my general observations in Nazareth and, and from my biblical studies, I will form the probability judgment that this is not the case and Jesus of Nazareth is not the Messiah. Now, that way of thinking, generalizing from, from particulars of our experience and then drawing probability judgments is inevitable and good. This is the controversial part of this message that has me running a huge risk. And uh, I'll show you what the risk is before we get to the end. And you, whether you fall for the risk will determine where your heart is. It is inevitable and good that the human brain take note of particulars in life, form generalizing judgments, and act on probabilities. You must live your life that way. There is no other way to live it. Let me give you some illustrations. Mushrooms. Some of them are poisonous. So you observe that those with these features, and you observe enough of them, and see enough effects on rats maybe, that you know when a particular mushroom has those features, you don't eat it. And you save your life. Now this little mushroom that you're rejecting might say, don't treat me as part of this class. I'm an individual. Bite and see. But you don't do that. Your life depends on not treating this individual mushroom in isolation from your experience of other mushrooms. That's the way the mind must work. And every one of you, of every shape and size and color, does it whether you plan to or not. The brain processes information that way. Sometimes we make terrible mistakes. For example, you cross the I-35 bridge 1,000 times over the Mississippi. And you form judgments, it's a good bridge. I've proved it a 1,000 times. It can hold up 30 tons of cement mixers. They check it. Probability, going to hold me up. And August 1st, 6.05, you were wrong. The 13 people are dead. They blew it. Nobody would say they were sinners for that mistake. That's not a sinful mistake. That's a good judgment. Bridge is going to hold me up. I'm crossing the bridge. When you form judgments and you make mistakes, it doesn't mean you're a sinner. Might. Might, but not always. Closer to the issue. I walk through this neighborhood thousands of times over the last 27 years. I walk to church. I never get in the car if I can help it. I hate cars. Lived for three years without a car in Germany. Loved it. Hope there are no cars in heaven. <laughs> so I'm walking, seeing people. The walking parson. If I see a man of a certain group of features. I could describe some of the clothes. And I will conclude Somali and Muslim. And I could be wrong. But I'm seeing this man, met, talked enough, seen enough. No, that is a Somali. And probably, statistically, Muslim. That's the way the brain works. That can be very useful or hurtful. Another one. Driving down 11th Avenue, white car, probably a Crown Victoria. Lights start flashing on the top. 
behind me? I'm thinking, that's probably a policeman. <laughs> might not be a policeman. Might be a trick. Might be a trick. But I pull over. It's my judgment call. Seen enough of these cars. Highly unlikely that it's a trick. Could be a trick. I'm pulling over. Probability judgment. That's the way I live my life all day long, every day. You can make horrible mistakes this way. For example, about 25 years ago, there was a doctor in this church who was doing his residency at the Henman County Medical Center emergency room, and he told me, I just saw the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my life. Deer season had opened, and they brought a man in, medevaced a man in, and he had a, an arrow, bow and arrow arrow, in his back, through his heart, and coming out the front, lying on the table. It's like, a, like in a cowboy movie. And he said, his buddy shot him. Why did he shoot him? This is not intentional. The guy's devastated. He shot him because he didn't take enough data into account. He formed his probability judgment on brown and movement in a bush. That's all. Brown and movement in a bush, and he shot. Bad idea. So you can make colossal mistakes, deadly mistakes, doing what you must do. You should do it really well. Let Jesus put a stamp of approval on this way of thinking. Don't want you to think, well, you're just, you know, just kind of analyzing your brain and how it works. That's not very authoritative. Well, you're right, it's not. Jesus commended this way of thinking in a kind of backhanded way one day. Pharisees came to him. This is Matthew 16, 2 and 3. Pharisees come to him and they ask him for a sign. Now Jesus is very angry about this. He does not like being asked for a sign when he's given so many evidences of his reality. He knows that the request for a sign is coming from a hard heart who won't see the nose on their face. So they're asking for more and more evidences to justify their own hard-heartedness. And he sees that. He knows right what they're dealing with. And here's what he says to them. Matthew 16, 2. When it is evening, you say, it'll be fair weather. For the sky is red. And in the morning, it'll be stormy today. For the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky. And you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Their guilt rested squarely on their competencies to generalize. You get up every morning and you have and your fathers did and your grandfathers did. And if it's red sky in the morning, sailor's warning... It's going to be trouble today. Generalization, don't get in your boat. At night, red sky, red at night, sailors, delight. You've done this for centuries, generalizing from nature to what's going to be today. You could be wrong, but you live that way. And Jesus said, that you're so good at that means you're doubly guilty. For not being able to see me and who I am. Okay. In other words, generalizing and living on the basis of probability judgments from what we've seen in the world is both inevitable and good. What about Nathaniel? Let's go back to Nathaniel now. Verse 45. Nathaniel. We found him. We found the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth answers, I mean, Nathaniel answers, for, verse 46. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, question again. Is this a non-sinful, fully warranted probability judgment like the bridge will hold? <laughs> 